and welcome to Munson Made This. My name is Michael and I cook vegan food. So if you want more vegan recipes or vegan content, you should click that subscribe button below, give this video a thumbs up and might as well comment as well. All that helps the video get seen by more people. Uh, there's also channel memberships if you wanna join and have access to more content. You can also applaud this video. All that is below. Today I am making something that I'm really excited about. It's kind of a combination of a few different things. It's part lasagna, part gratin. Um, I'm calling it a lasagna today. So it is a butternut squash lasagna that is noodleless, completely gluten-free, with layers of tofu ricotta, a mushroom and leek layer, and a bechamel sauce, which as I said is gluten-free, made with chickpea flour. So I've done some prep work ahead of time. I'm gonna show you what I have done in advance. We'll start cooking, we'll get it in the oven, and then we'll have this delicious, comforting, cozy, gluten-free, lasagna-esque butternut squash dish to devour. The first thing I prepped ahead of time were my butternut squash noodles. And what I did here is just took butternut squash, just the neck part. That's just the part before you get to the seed part. And I sliced it really thin on a mandolin, close to like an eighth inch thick, pretty much as thin as I could get it without it breaking apart. And then I put all of them on baking sheets. It probably took about two or three batches. I baked them for about 15 to 20 minutes, flipping them over halfway through uh, until they were like this, um, mostly cooked, still a little bit al dente, um, but a perfect noodle texture. I mean, look at that. If you don't have a mandolin, you can slice it. I would recommend slicing it into discs as thin as you can get it and doing it that way because it's gonna be really hard without a mandolin to get this size of noodle. Um, but that was done in advance. I did it yesterday. You too could do that in advance like I did, but it's just gonna help my assembly today go a lot faster. The next thing that I prepped ahead of time are the vegetables for my layer. This is a bunch of leeks. Here are a bunch of mushrooms. These are gonna get cooked together and they're gonna be their own layer. Um, I also made a tofu ricotta. I don't remember if I mentioned this at the beginning, but it's basically tofu and uh, fresh parsley, fresh thyme, a little bit of nutritional yeast. Of course, this entire recipe is gonna be linked below and it's on MunsonMadeThis.com. The last layer is the bechamel sauce layer. And I'm using chickpea flour to make that. Um, this isn't really prepped in advance. I'm gonna be making this fresh, but pretty much everything that you see me doing from the bechamel to cooking the leeks and uh, mushrooms, all of this can be done in advance the day before. Um, and you can just assemble and bake before serving. So let's head back to the stove and I'm gonna start cooking this stuff up so we can get to building this. So while my pan heats up to make the mushroom and leek portion, I'm gonna be working on the bechamel style sauce and I'm going to start by putting my chickpea flour in the pot and it's about a half cup of chickpea flour not about it's a half cup uh, it's a half cup of chickpea flour and then I have four cups of this is almond milk and so I'm just going to pour a little bit in to start with the heat's not even on yet and this is just so I can get the chickpea flour and the almond milk incorporated so that I don't really have any lumps so I want to get this mixed together into kind of a paste and then I'll add more almond milk and then I'll put up the heat. It's gonna simmer for maybe about 10 minutes. I wanna stir it fairly constantly because I don't want the chickpea flour to sink to the bottom and stick. So as you can see, it's kind of coming together. There might be a couple lumps. They will work themselves out in the end. But this is such a great way to make a bechamel sauce. You could use this to make gravy. Like, I know I'm obsessed with chickpea flour. I put it in pretty much like every single recipe that I make on this channel, but it's magical, I feel like. Chickpea flour and cauliflower could take over the world. They can be anything and everything. All right, so I've got these pretty much incorporated. Gonna add the rest of my milk. Again, some lumps might be unavoidable. Reserve a little bit here. Turn this on to medium heat and just watch this stirring fairly constantly so that nothing sticks to the bottom. Now let's work on the mushrooms. I've got a large pan here on medium heat and I'm adding a bit of olive oil. If you wanted to make this oil free, you absolutely could. Um, but you want a nice large pan for the amount of mushrooms that we're cooking. This is about 10 ounces. Um, and I also slice these on a mandolin, just very thin, as thin as I possibly could. And you want a nice large pan so that there's a lot of surface area so that more mushrooms can touch the bottom. They can caramelize and get a better texture. And these are just gonna go until they reduce quite a bit before we actually add the leeks. So I can take this time to chat with you a little bit and just talk to you. Um, I didn't do a video last week. I was kind of on a little bit of a unintentional break, just slightly unmotivated, but uh, I'm back 
So if there's any videos or content that you want to see or any ideas that you have, please comment below and let me know. I'm always looking for ideas as things are kind of cooling off. I'm excited to do more fall recipes. Very excited to do the butternut squash recipe today so that I could sort of get into that fall mood. It's like my favorite season to, to cook in. And look, thanks to all of you that have subscribed and that follow me and that join me on my uh, channel membership. Like, it's just really nice to know that there are people out there that care, that like the content, that leave really nice comments. So thank you for being there, even though I haven't done a video in a week and a half. These uh, like wooden paddle things that I'm using here. Um, I've used them in a couple of videos and I've talked about them a little bit, but like I was watching uh, Rachel Ray, I think it was like at the beginning of quarantine and it was like the Rachel Ray show being filmed from her house with a phone. And I saw her using something that was similar to this. And so I started Googling and trying to figure out what it was and wound up on an Amazon page that had similar ones. So I ordered like a set. It was like four different sizes for like 20 bucks or something like that. Um, and I had them and I was like, felt kind of special because I it was the only one that I knew that had these. But then uh, there's an infomercial now. It's like the woman, I forget her name. She used to cook for like Martha Stewart Living's like TV show. Uh, and now she's like hawking them. And I guess they're called Spurtles. And they're like a Irish, I think they're Irish. Uh, like thing for stirring oats, I guess. I don't know. I felt really special feeling like I found this thing that I spotted in a video and now they're hawking them on infomercials. <laughs> so I'm stirring the bechamel constantly, leaving the mushrooms alone as much as I can. As you can see, they're breaking down quite a bit, but there's still quite a bit of moisture. They're not fully caramelized. With this dish, because we're using butternut squash noodles that aren't gonna really absorb liquid, they're gonna kick off more than they take on. So we wanna try to get as much liquid out, out as we can of the mushrooms. Um, so we wanna do that before we add the leeks, which are also gonna add their own amount of liquid. So trying not to touch these as much as you see me playing with them, but I'm trying not to touch these as much. But again, the sauce, I wanna keep that stirring, which my stirring has caused me to make a little bit of a mess, but whatever, no big deal. I'm gonna say this has about five minutes left to do. I've also already preheated my oven to 375. Um, so it's just a waiting game at this point. If you don't like mushrooms, which Ben hates mushrooms, but I know that he's not gonna eat this, so I decided to make a mushroom version of this. Um, but I've also made this with a, what is it called? Beyond sausage. I don't know why I forgot what it was called, but uh, beyond Italian sausage in place of like the mushroom and leek mixture. And that was really good as well. So if you're not a fan of mushrooms, um, or leeks, you could definitely put another kind of filling. Just like keep in mind what I said about the moisture, you wanna make sure to cook out quite a bit of it before um, you actually add it to the lasagna. Starting to thicken over here and these are brown enough for me to add the leeks now. So I'm gonna add those. If you've noticed also, I haven't added any salt and pepper to this. So I'm gonna add salt and pepper now. And I notice I haven't added seasoning to the bechamel sauce either. So I will be seasoning that once that thickens up. And then this is gonna go just for a few more minutes. Also, I want these to reduce. I want them to get a little bit of color on them and remove as much liquid as I can, again, so it doesn't just make a soupy mess for my lasagna. And I stepped away for too long, but as you can see here, it's starting to thicken up. I did turn it up to kind of medium high to get things going, turning it back down to low. It's simmering, thickening, and it's just like a beautiful, creamy sauce at this point. I'm gonna let this go for another minute. Then I'm gonna add the seasoning, which is nutritional yeast, salt, pepper, and then this can just hang out until the mushrooms and leeks are done, and then we're ready to assemble. There are a couple things I forgot that I was gonna put in this. First of all is spinach. So I have some fresh spinach that I've just kind of ripped apart. Um, this is going in at the very end, and that's just gonna wilt down. It'll spit out its liquid. Also garlic, and I'm waiting for the end to add this just so it doesn't burn. In terms of my bechamel sauce, I'm kind of run into a bit of a problem that um, I haven't run into before. So I'm just acknowledging it in full disclosure. I think because I heated it too fast, because <laughs> I was in a bit of a hurry, um, that it caused it to like separate and curdle a little bit. I don't think it's gonna make a difference to the final product, um, but just acknowledging it. Um, to season this up, I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of nutritional yeast, and I'm just eyeballing it and then also salt and pepper. And that's pretty much it for this. I'm gonna taste both the mushroom 
leak mixture and taste this before we proceed because I don't want anything that's under seasoned to go into this because anything under seasoned that makes it in there is gonna suck flavor from other things and then you have just an entirely under seasoned dish. Mm, you can smell the garlic and the leeks, it smells really good. The spinach is also gonna help kind of deglaze the bottom of the pan as well. I'm just incorporating all of the seasonings in here, salt, pepper, nutritional yeast. And then again, I'm gonna taste this just to make sure that everything has enough flavor so that it holds its own in the dish. It's actually really good. Um, it would also be good if you added some maybe like no chicken better than bouillon or anything like that, that kind of um, vegetable bouillon, anything like that will also really lift up the flavor and uh, really like strengthen the umami as well. But I think this is really good. This is ready to go. I just need to taste the mushroom, leek, and spinach mixture. And then we're definitely ready to assemble. All right, let's give this a taste. It's great. I can taste everything. The salt level's good, don't need to add any more. So this is gonna be divided into three different, this is gonna go on three different layers. Uh, the white sauce is actually gonna be about five different layers. So let me get set up with a little setup here and then uh, we'll start to make the lasagna. Everything looks and smells really good aside from my bechamel kind of issue. I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but we're just gonna go uh, ahead with it. So with the squash noodles, like I said, they cooked ahead of time, so they're a really great texture. Um, and you need about like 24 full sheets or as best as you can do, uh, and then some smaller bits to fill in the center. Um, use your best bits for, bits is the wrong word. Uh, use your best pieces for like on top though. So uh, I'm gonna reserve four of what I think are my best and set those aside. So those will be sure to go on top. Now it's time to start layering. The first thing I wanna do is add just a bit of my sauce. Doesn't look that bad, I guess, but if you see a little bit of a close up, you'll see that it is kind of separated, but I have all the confidence in the world that it's still gonna make a great dish. And I think that's one of the keys to cooking uh, is just having the confidence, right? It's a very Julia Child way of looking at it. Uh, no one's gonna know in the final product, you might've had an issue here. And as long as it tastes good and you feed people that want to eat, then I think that uh, you're gonna be okay. So let's start layering. And because I have the sizes that are going to kind of fit around, I'm gonna put four like this. and then use one for the center. All right, the next layer is my tofu ricotta. This is going to be um, used three times, so I want to break this into three separate, well, layers, that's not right. Uh, just make sure that you use a third of it each time. Um, while I was trying to fix the sauce a little bit, Ben was going through and checking the seasoning, so do make sure that you you taste this stuff before it goes into the lasagna. As I said, like you don't want a layer that's kind of under seasoned um, because that'll suck the flavors from everything else. So the ricotta is now perfectly seasoned according to Ben. Next layer is the mushrooms and leeks. You want to use a third of your mushrooms and leeks. Make sure to get those evenly distributed across the pan. And then we're gonna be adding our bechamel sauce and we're gonna use about a quarter of that. And you just want enough to kind of flood the layer and to cover everything that you've put on there. We are ready for our final layer of butternut squash. So I'm going to use the ones that I had set aside as my prettiest and best and um, you know, this video has been kind of like a cautionary tale along the way of what not to do. Um, don't heat your milk too hot too fast, otherwise it will curdle. And then also just make sure that you're being economical with your sauces because you might wind up like I have with a little bit too much sauce. So I'm gonna try to make this work. So of course, the last thing you want to do is add <laughs> your bechamel to the very top and then smooth it out. If you're like me and you find yourself in this situation and you're worried about it, then you can definitely go ahead and make just a little bit more. So if you're like me and use too much sauce in the other layers and you don't have enough sauce to go on top, you could make more 
or just make it work like I have. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, this is gonna go in the oven covered, and then at the end we'll top it with some fresh parsley and some fresh thyme, and it'll make everything look beautiful. This needs to bake for 45 minutes covered. I'm gonna try using this silicone lid the first 45 minutes, then it comes off. Uh, I'm also gonna be keeping it on a baking sheet just in case it decides to overflow, which in previous tests has. So this goes in and I'll see it in 45 minutes. This is fresh out of the oven after the 45 minutes initially uh, with it covered. I took the cover off and actually cranked it up to 400. This top is not normally how it looks because I didn't have enough sauce for the top. So just picture it normally being a little bit more white, but it's still gonna be delicious and we're gonna cover it with some fresh parsley and fresh thyme as soon as this cools off a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna let Ben take some photos of it while we wait the 10, 15 minutes we need to before we cut into it. And then uh, we're gonna dig in. this. It's vegan. It's gluten-free. It's grain-free. I'm sure it's probably even like paleo or something like that. Um, it's super decadent, super creamy. Mm. Wow, the flavor is so good. So many different like layers of flavor and texture. I should have waited a little bit longer to cut it, but it's delicious. I forgot to mention also, excuse me, that um, when the essential like the first 45 minutes are up you do want to stick like a fork or a knife into it to just test the texture my noodles are really thin so of course they cook a little bit quicker but if you're cutting them by hand they might be a little bit thicker so you want to just check and make sure because you might have to cook it a little bit longer if your um, butternut squash slices are a little bit thicker so that's all i have for you today you definitely need to give this a try even if you're not vegan or gluten-free or grain-free or anything like that it's just so good so decadent so flavorful so rich and made with just like simple, wholesome, plant-based ingredients. So thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting this channel, all of you that are joining me on Patreon or our channel members here on YouTube. Um, all that information is below if you too wanna to become a member of my Patreon or my channel membership. Again, you can give this video an applause, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next week with a brand new recipe video. Bye.